Greetings in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord and Savior. My name is Trisha Beckles, and I welcome you today to the Voice of Hope. I'm saying to somebody today that truly Jesus Christ is Lord. I'm saying beside him, there is absolutely no other. There is no substitute. There is no alternative. There is no other option that can match up to my God. And I'm saying to you today, because sometimes we need to be reminded that whatever you're believing God for, hold on to his word, hold on to his promises, know and understand that God did not lie to you. He doesn't even need your help. Sometimes we're tempted to help God and we want to do this and put this in place. God doesn't need your help because you think he's taking too long. I'm saying God's timing is perfect and he will come through for you regardless of who you are, regardless of how big the situation looks. I mean, we're singing that song these days all over the place. We heard he made a way. God is still the God that is a miracle working God. He is still that miracle working God that we've read about for all these years. He is still the God of the impossible. I mean, when man says no, and I, I mean, I'm rejoicing this morning because when man says no, God is the one that has the final say. I mean, it is God and only God who works in the affairs of man. I mean, yes, we know all the good sayings and we have them all. You're too blessed to be stressed and everything else that we come up with. But sometimes in the midst of your situation, you need to be reminded that God really does care. That God is willing and more than able to work things out on your behalf. And if that is you today, I'm saying hold on to God. You cannot argue with a man with a testimony and you would know what God has done for you in the past. So I'm saying don't come this far and give up on God. It is God that will see you through. It is God that will perfect every single thing that concerns you as he has me. And I can thank God, not because the situations have worked out the way I want them to, or they are still as it were works in progress, but I can stand in the knowledge of knowing that God is looking out for me as he is for you. I can stand in the knowledge of knowing that God has my best interest at heart, regardless of what he allows to come my way. So we can rejoice. Even as David reminded us in Psalm chapter 37, verse 25, where he says, I have been young and now I'm old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. And I'm asking the question, who out there needs to be reminded that God has not given up on you? God has not forsaken you. And I'm saying it again. He didn't bring you all this way. He didn't allow you to come so far. He didn't take you through all that he took you through to allow you to just fall by the wayside now, to leave you on your own. So hold on to God. Hold on to his word. We know at the voice of hope we can look in the face of all that is coming our way and rejoice knowing, even as David said in Psalm chapter 42 verse 11, hope thou in God. Because at the end of the day, it is only God, hallelujah, that has the final say. Shall we pray today? Almighty and eternal God, we thank you today because you are indeed interested in the affairs of your people. You are interested in the affairs of man. Lord, even as we come today in no other name but the name of Jesus Christ, your son, the one who paid the price for us, that we might have access to your throne room of grace. Father, we thank you today for your people, for calling us to yourself and giving us the name of Christ, oh God, as our banner. And Lord, even as we pray today, I pray for your people. 
God, in the midst of what life is bringing our way, we pray today for strength. Strength for your people, God, to stand in the evil day. Lord, we understand that the attacks sometimes even come from their own household. But God, in the midst of it, you are still there. And we say thank you, O oh God. We thank you, God, that the answers we seek remain in you. We thank you for being the God that is able to work every single situation out on our behalf, that you would get the glory from our lives. We thank you today, God that there is nothing that is impossible for you to do. And we rejoice in the fact that nothing that comes our way takes you by surprise. Mighty God, wherever you have placed us, wherever you've called us to function, we thank you for anointing us, O oh God, that your name would be glorified from our efforts. And Father, we thank you that we don't have to walk this journey alone. So Lord, even as we go through this time of sharing, O oh God, I thank you for your hands upon your people. I commit them into your hands. Every care, every concern, every frustration, everything that the enemy has tried against them. Lord, even now we bring it to naught in the name of Jesus. And I'm asking you, dear Lord, to take complete control. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pull down every stronghold of the enemy that wants to work against us, that wants to work against TIN, that wants to work against the people of God in this, the latter days. Even as we see the day of the Lord fast approaching, Lord, I declare in the name of Jesus that your people will stand in your strength, knowing that come what may, the victory is assured in Jesus' name. And so, Father, I just bless you and I honor you and I give you all the glory. I say, Lord, have your way even now and touch the hearts of your people to stand firm in you and to know that God is with us all. And if God be for us, who can be against us? Mighty God, we just give you all glory. We give you all honor. We give you all praise. And we thank you today, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. I mean... I thank God that, you know, as we started in the last episode, talking about the whole issue of leadership. And as, we, as I prepared, you know, the burden was such that, you know, on some level there are some leaders that are operating not even knowing what a day may bring forth. And, and I mean, we know that one of the major tools that the enemy uses is discouragement. Where you feel like no matter what you try, you're always going to be the worst off for it. Where you wonder, what next can I do? And yet, God still has you in the palm of his hands. I mean, it, in so many ways, the devil has been effective to cause pastors, especially sometimes, or other leaders, to move out of their God-given position because they have been discouraged and the devil continues today and even as he sees the time fast approaching to where his ultimate demise will be manifested he continues to do it he continues to try to move leaders out of their place but know and understand that God is with you know and understand even as we remember Moses' example Moses was not able to make it to the promised land simply because he allowed the people to get to him to such a way that he walked outside of the will of God and walked in disobedience before God. I'm saying to you today as a leader, not necessarily just a pastor, but a leader, and we know at times leadership can be tough, but I'm saying focus on God. God has had you there for a reason. God has the answers that you seek and know beyond the shadow of a doubt that God will see you through. I'm saying to all leaders that, you know, it's my prayer. It is my prayer that you will never lose sight of the fact that your life and your position, your time and your function as a leader is in the hand of Almighty God. He is the one and he is the only one that puts up and takes down. So I'm saying it is best to walk before God in humility and in obedience, 
knowing beyond the shadow of a doubt that God is the one and the only one that should get the glory. I'm saying even in the midst of maybe sometimes you don't understand some things, wait on God to reveal it to you. Know and understand that God is not the author of confusion. So do not lean onto your own understanding. If you don't know, there is nothing wrong in saying you don't know. There is nothing wrong in asking a question. There is nothing wrong in going before God and saying, God, I need your clarity. God is willing to work with us even as we work with him, even as we are willing to yield unto his leading. That's why he tells us in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6, to trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto your own understanding. He says, in all thy ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. I mean, it's so bad now there's even a song out now that says, don't say what God say if you know God didn't say it. And it's only to tell us to wait on God before we go making pronouncements on God's behalf. Because it is so easy to lose credibility that way. And I mean, in this season where the enemy is only looking for an, an occasion to accuse the brethren, you want to make sure that you strive to walk circumspect before the people of God and before the people that you are called to influence. So be very very careful. And as we started in the last episode, you know, we started to look at some key lessons that we can glean for leaders looking at Exodus chapter 32, which of course is the account of the golden calf as they call it with Aaron and Moses when they found that Moses was taking too long to come down from the mountain. And the first lesson we pointed out was to tell us as leaders, to tell you as a leader, like I said, it doesn't always have to be a religious leader because we call to function in society, we call to function in our communities, we're called to function in our homes. But the first lesson I want you to know, and I'm recapping here, is that you are not indispensable. You can be replaced. The greatest of our leaders can be replaced. I'm remembering Miles Monroe. Miles Monroe was on his way to minister and the plane crashed and that was the end of Miles Monroe. But Miles Monroe was such a leader that he equipped others to take over from him. He always used, one of the things he was you know, famous and always saying was the fact that as a leader, you prepare yourself to be replaced. That way you don't have to hold on and think, well, it's all about you. And if I'm not there, then the whole thing falls apart. Because life has a cruel way of showing us differently. So that's the first thing. You are not indispensable. You can be replaced. And the second thing we spoke about was that the voice of the people is not necessarily the voice of God. We say it, especially in politics in our society, but we understand that God is the one who directs. And sometimes when we lean onto our own understanding, we come up with a, a, a path that is destructive for us. So we need to know and understand. And we made the third point that if then you're in it to be popular, by listening to the voice of the people, then you have already missed the mark as a leader. What we said was, yes, you give consideration for their needs. You give consideration for their suggestions. But ultimately, you want what is best for the people that you are called to lead. Sometimes, as leaders, you have to make hard decisions. No one understands that that is a part of it. So as we began to study this, you know, we studied the chapter a little more closely than just reading through it. We understood that the children of Israel knew of God. I mean, they knew of a God that was able to work signs and wonders and miracles. This was the God that delivered them from Egypt. This was the God that was taking them to where they needed to get to. 
But in their case, that was it for them. So they didn't display a desire to know anything more about this God. And we said then that because of this kind of approach, any God in their view would have done the trick. Once the God is able to do what they think the God should do, whatever they call God, I mean, as long as the God was able to keep up with their agenda and do what they said or do what they wanted, it was good enough for them. They didn't want to know about God himself, God Almighty, the I am that I am. I mean, they experienced his majesty by seeing some of the things that he did. But instead of getting to know more about him, they basically ran scared of him. So it was easy then to seek a replacement whose God would be able to do the same signs and wonders. And for them then it came through Aaron, who seemed to be the next closest thing to Moses in getting to God, in getting to interact with their version of what is called God. And I mean, as we look around our life or society, as we look around the world, we can smile and see so many people worshiping so many things and calling it God. So many people are even worshiping their very selves. That so far that even now we are at a stage where Christians are almost afraid to speak up because we are called intolerant, because we are called bigots, because we are called exclusivists. But no one understands that when you have the truth, it is hard to suppress it. Do not be ashamed of the truth of Almighty God. So I'm saying what we said in, those, in that lesson should help us as leaders to understand, even from this example of the children of Israel, we should understand that it really is not about you. And I'm sure there are those out there who can look and know and understand that some people are more interested in the mantle that God has placed on your life and what it can do for them than they are about what is going on with you as a human being. It can be hurtful, but I'm encouraging you today, don't take it personally. That's just how humans are. And that is why a lot of times, even in complimenting you, as a leader, maybe for a stance you take or something you've done, usually the compliments that you receive has more to do with your anointing than it is about your person. So it's easy for you to hear about a good sermon and how well you can preach if you're a preacher. But in a lot of cases, no one is even asking how you and your family are going, if you have your basic needs met. And especially as a pastor, because it's very easy then for the people under you, it's very easy for the people of God to say, well, as a man of God, God will provide for them. So I don't have to step in. Not knowing and understanding that God uses the people to bless and provide for his servants. The Bible talks about that, that the servant, he must be counted worthy of double honor. God uses his people to bless his people. But sometimes we, as those that are under them, are so much more interested in what, we, what they can do for us that we don't take the time out to look out for them. And so some pastors, some leaders are suffering because of the expectations of the people. And I'm saying yes, that is a reality for so many leaders both inside and outside of the church. Sometimes they smile, but you don't know what is going on. And that is why we are encouraged always to pray for our leaders. So as we get back to the passage in Exodus chapter 32, you know, I just want to encourage you, looking at it, one of the keys that I want you to get out of it is that as a leader, it is your walk with God that will see you through. So if you look at Moses, for example, as long as it took, Moses was going to stay with God. The people were at the bottom of the mountain complaining. They don't know what happened to Moses and everything else. Moses wasn't busy. For as long as it took in the presence of the Lord to allow God to do what he had to do, Moses was willing to pay the price. We understand in our society right now that busyness 
is one of the tools that the enemy uses. And so sometimes it's hard to find that time to spend with God. But know and understand that God is the one that will fill you, that will strengthen you, that will equip you for what you are called to do. And so Moses' love for God allowed him to be compassionate even when God was running out of patience with the people. Moses was the one that interceded on their behalf as we saw in verses 11 to 14. And it only serves to remind us what we highlighted last week in Hebrews 13, 17, that in truth and in fact, our leaders watch for our souls as they must give an account. So it helps you then to get past the ingratitude that sometimes you may experience as a leader from those that you are called to serve. And I'm saying to you today, just know that God sees. Know that God is the one who refreshes. Know that God is the one who will strengthen you. Know that God is the one who will equip you for what you are called to do. And I'm saying, and I keep emphasizing the fact, yes, this is a religious station, we talk about God, but this permeates beyond the church, beyond the four walls, it goes into our society. This is about families where heads of the households are being challenged, are being, as it were, downright disrespected on so many levels, where heads of communities are cursed outright. Even our political leaders are being cursed outright. We have to do better than that. And I'm saying to us that anywhere as a leader, Anywhere that you are called to lead or operate in a position of influence, I don't care who you are. You could be Honorable Chief Sec of the London. You could be anybody. You could be the person leading the gang sweeping on the streets. Whoever you are, if you are called in a position of leadership, you need to allow God to lead you. You need to allow Almighty God to refresh you. You need to allow Almighty God to strengthen you. And I'm saying to you today, don't be afraid to wait on God. I mean, sometimes the decision seems especially pressing. And you know you don't have an answer. You really don't know what to do. I'm saying to you, Make sure you wait on God. There is no harm in waiting on God. And I'm saying you need also to foster a community of prayer around you so that before you even say, let's pray, somebody else is telling you, let's pray. Because we know and understand the power of prayer. The Bible tells us that effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. We know that we can do many things through prayer rather than leaning onto our own understanding. As Matthew 6.33 reminds us, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be, not will be, maybe, shall be added unto you. So, you know, you can ask the question then, what can happen when you choose not to? And we can get back to our text and look at Aaron receiving the request from the people. And what is his response? Let's read verse 2 to 5, and we'll ponder on that as we get ready to wrap up. The time really does go fast, but God is interested in us. Verses 2 to 5 of Exodus 32 says, And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings, which are in the ears of your wives, of your sons, and of your daughters, and bring them unto me. And all the people break off the golden earrings which were in their ears, and brought them unto Aaron. And he received them at their hand, and fashioned it, with a graving tool, after he had made it a molten calf. And they said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. And I mean, as we go along, we'll have a lot to say about Aaron. 
But notice that even as he seemed to go along with the people's request, he was doing his own thing in the midst. So verse 25, for example, tells us that Aaron had made them naked unto their shame among their enemies. And I have to ask the question then, is this something that God would have been pleased with? You see, because especially in this time and season, sometimes as leaders, opportunities come for us to take a stand, to make a clear stance for Jesus Christ. And somehow or the other, we fail to do so. And instead, we compromise. And the world is left wondering. Or we stay silent. And the world says, okay, well, they are okay with it, as they would have spoken up. So, I mean, is there any wonder why in the midst of all that is taking place in our society, in our world, that the cry continues to ring out, where is the church? Because we have failed to stand. I'm saying to us, just like the children of Israel, the world needs to know the Savior. And I'm saying God is counting on you to make stand and declare the Lord Jesus Christ wherever you are, whatever the situation. May God bless you and keep you. Know that you are called of God and he will perfect everything that concerns you. Amen. Mm -hmm.